everything's up on Git anyways, but you know, it's like, do I really want to bring this anywhere but my home? <laughs> What's on this thing right now? So, awesome, dude. Yeah, we're starting to bring some peeps in. I should run this back to the, uh, the main table. This is your, uh, yeah, Matt's here and Stu's here. We got it full. Good. Do you, wanna, full. do you need to write that in? Yeah, dude, let's write that in. We're going to go hang this up. Oh, man, we forgot to announce the job posting board. Ooh. What's up? You could announce it here at least. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that right now. We should pass it around. All right, so we're about one minute off here. Uh, we just remembered that uh, we, nobody made an announcement today about the job posting board out in front. So if you are a, a, a company that is looking to hire, you can post your job up on the board, and uh, people who might feel qualified will take down the information and hopefully contact you. Um, uh, we'll try to make that announcement in some other uh, sessions as well, because I think that that was one that was forgot. Tin. Right. Uh, <laughs> So uh, my name is Steve Rifkin, uh, known as Stevenator on D.O. This gentleman here is Chelman. He'll be driving our session, uh, the first session here. And uh, we have B.T. Mash, Ashok Modi, and uh, excuse me, Joe Chelman, I should say. Uh, uh, and uh, this is going to be the display suite overview for D6 and D7. Take it away, mister. All right. Welcome. So yeah, we're going to go over display suite. I, I don't know... Um, I'm assuming that most most people here are either not. I, I see at least one person in here who introduced me to Display Suite, Jeremy. Uh, but uh, so I don't know what you're doing here, but I accept your presence. Uh, so anyway, here, here we go. Um, display Suite in Drupal six is a suite of modules. In Drupal seven, it's a pretty much a single module that uh, will give you easy control over the display of content on your site. Um, it's, as I say, Drupal 6 and 7, um, and uh, I don't actually know how to pronounce the maintainer's name. I think it's Christoph de Jaeger. There we go. So that's, that's who uh, gets most of the credit for this guy. So those of you who have a little bit of experience with Drupal development might think that this, the idea of this might sound like panels if you've ever looked at it before. I know when I started, I was sort of wondering, well, okay, why would I use this when I already have panels? Um, they are similar. You can think of, uh, I, I mean, the way I sometimes think of it is as panels light. Uh, it does handle some similar tasks where you can put content in different spots on the page, and it's a, it's a nice way to, to break things up in, in a way that panels is often used. But it's really not the same. Um, <clears throat> so but we'll, we'll get into that. Uh, to install it, it's not too terrible. Just go to DS the DS project on Drupal.org. Um, again, in Drupal 7, it is pretty much one module, just one download, and you'll pretty much get everything. Uh, it has a couple of sub-modules that you may want to enable separately, but it's basically just one thing. It does depend on CTools, which is uh, a module that just about everything depends on these days, it seems, and uh, CTools named for... The long name of that is Chaos Tools, uh, named for Merlin of Chaos, who is Earl Miles, who will be here tomorrow presenting as well. So watch for that. Um, anyway, in Drupal 6, it's a bunch of modules. And so what you would do is you go to the Display Suite page, and it will point you to all the other ones. Um, the abbreviations for, uh, for people who use Drush or, uh, or just you know, want to write them down are here on the slides. Uh, you get those, and you'll get pretty much everything that the Drupal 7 version includes. Okay, so now we're going to get into the actual use cases here and like why you would actually bother using this thing. So the, one of the big wins with Display Suite is that it can pretty much take you away from having to edit any template.php files anymore. Um, most of the things that, uh, I, I, I mean, I think it's one of those 80-20 things where it can cover at least 80% of the cases where you might in the past have wanted to uh, edit a template file to place things in specific spots on the page. It can save you that work. Um, the, big, the big thing that it does is it will, it will 
break up the page. In Drupal 6, it presents you with a few regions. In Drupal 7, it presents you with uh, pretty much a bajillion places to do it. Um, and you can also create your own. But it, it busts up the page into, into regions. And you can place your fields or just you know any, any stuff that you like in those regions. In addition to that, and this is the, the major area where it kind of deviates from panels, is it lets you create what are called build modes in Drupal 6, and in Drupal 7 are called view modes. So what that means is you can have a single content type with a single set of fields, and then depending on different build modes, which you can trigger in a whole bunch of different ways, you can have the same content type presented in different ways. And all this stuff is available for your control in the Drupal user interface. Um, which is pretty nice. I mean, I realize we're, this is all sort of abstract right now, but uh, we're going to get into a demo a little bit later. Um, <clears throat> another thing it lets you do is create custom fields. Now, this is because we have things like the like CCK and just fields built into Drupal 7, this might seem a little weird, but the idea is these are fields only for display. So, like, one, one area where I personally will use this is to take fields that I've kept as separate fields in terms of data storage, like say first name and last name. Maybe you want to store those separately. But when you display them, you might want to treat them as one thing. So with Display Suite, you can create a full name field that's only used for the display, and you can set it up so that that has its own little widget that you can drag around and, and put in the right place. Um, and it also does a similar thing with field groups. So of course, there are CCK also, and in Drupal 7 with the field groups module, you can create groups for when you're entering your node data, but you can have separate ones just for the display. So you can kind of separate your data storage from your presentation, which is very nice. And then after you create, you, you've got all these regions, you've got all this data, you've got all this stuff, uh, you can also um, mess with those regions that you have in useful ways, adding classes and, you know, just giving yourself different hooks for theming and that sort of thing. And then, after all that, there's more. Uh, you can export everything to code. So uh, the developers in, in the audience might get a little bit excited about this because it is nice to get, um, sometimes you end up with things that are, that are code if you're creating fields and nobody likes to have that in your database. Um, for performance reasons or, you know, because it makes you feel dirty. I don't care. But anyway, you can get all the stuff out and you can stick it in a module and that way you can get it into your source control. You can, uh, you get the little bit of performance benefit. Um, it's just, a, it's useful. So, uh, we'll do, I'm going I'm to walk you through some of the user interface for this thing and uh, show you some of this stuff. So, we'll switch over to a browser. So I've got a Drupal 6 and a Drupal 7 installation side by side here with a, a bunch of content types. Um, I'm only going to pretty much use one that is jam packed with fields. Um, but uh, do I, I guess I'll, I'll step through this in a couple of different versions. Do we care uh, about whether I show you Drupal 6 or Drupal 7 first? Drupal 6, show of hands. Okay, and 7. Okay, we're going to go with six, just to be contrary. No. Uh, okay, so this is, this is the Drupal 7 version. Uh, I've got a, just a super basic site here. We have a, a clone of Stark running, which is the, one of the core themes in Drupal 7 with pretty much nothing on it. Um, so these are, this is a view with uh, just a lot of content. And you can see we, we have... Some custom fields, like a you know, there's a date field. You got your, you know, your submitted string up here. We have a an aside and a sidebar and just all this. There's a byline down here. What is all this? This is a mess. So, <clears throat> but this is just a default presentation without really touching anything. So, uh, we have Display Suite installed. So, I'm gonna hit up under Display Suite and structure here. By the way, I'm using. Uh, I, I do have a. This is. A mostly vanilla um, installation, but I did switch out the toolbar module in Drupal 7 for the admin uh, menu module, uh, which I find a little bit nicer for just drilling down into the whole thing. So we'll hit up Display Suite here. 
doesn't present you much when you just hit the uh, the initial thing. But what you're the the way you're going to really get into this and get interested is through uh, layout. So in Drupal seven, uh, you know everything is an entity, right? So it, comments have fields, users have fields, like everything is fieldable, which makes it you know that much more exciting. But uh, here's my content type: lots of hug and fields. Um, it's got a lot of fields, so I'm going to take over its display with display, with display suite by hitting this link. Uh, or I'm going to, you know, start doing that. So right now, I am looking, I have two view modes here. The default, which is, you know, the full node and the teaser. That view that we were looking at, uh, is, I think it's set up to display teasers, so I'm going to jump over there. So now I'm looking at the teasers. We got just a bunch of garbage. This is all uh, just kind of sitting there. So this is the this is where the things get real. Um, I'm going to select a layout, and this now we're starting to get into the actual display suite stuff here. So uh, anybody, I don't know if anybody's used display suite in Drupal six, but um, this should already be somewhat alarming or uh, or happy making, depending on uh, your perspective. We have a lot of layouts available. Just out of the box. So, I don't know, let's go with a, a fluid two-column stack layout. Sure. Save that. And now, a uh, display suite has taken over. So, I have a header, a left side, a right side, and a footer. And uh, display suite provides, with these default layouts, it provides you the markup and the style sheets to uh, make all this stuff happen. So, down here, I have all of this, all of the pieces of this content type that are that can be displayed on the page. Um, so you can show your comments. Uh, well, let's see. Let's put those in the footer. Why not? Um, the title, put in the header. We have a body field. We do have a body field. So let's put that over here. Sure. Um, put the byline on the left side. That byline is probably going to be a nightmare. Because it's all of all of the content on the site is garbage that's uh, generated by the Devel Generate module, which is uh, a very nice module for filling out a site um, just with a bunch of crap for the purposes of theming. But as you'll see, it it, it might blow up this page, so we'll we'll see what happens. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to put I have these uh, sidebar things. I'll just throw those around. Okay, so. In Drupal 7, this is another another little win here. It's saving as I choose these things, which is nice. I'm going to be a little bit uh, OCD and just save it again. But now I'm just going to close the overlay to refresh this thing. And suddenly, voila, um, it is taking care of laying these things out. We have our title, in, and this, this is um, per node. So each node has its own columns. And uh, its own regions. There, all the all the float stuff is taking care of you, uh, for, uh, taking care of for you. It's done pretty much. Oh yeah, here we go. Here's our here's our enormous, ridiculous byline, which is a single word that's probably 250 characters long. <laughs> Thank you, Devel Generate. Um, <clears throat> but you can see it's taking care of all this stuff, and I didn't have to do anything. I just click 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 around a little bit. I'm going to revisit that now to show you a few more things that you can do with this. So. Get back in here. Go back to the teaser. So, uh, along with being able to just choose the regions, I can I can do all this stuff by I can hide all these ugly labels, which I don't need. And then each uh, each of these fields usually will have some settings that you can play with. So the title, for example, we're showing teasers, which means that we're not showing the whole thing. So probably we would like this to be linked. So you can tell it, yes, please, link that for me. Oh, thank you. Um, I can choose the, the tag, and I can stick a class on it. And it's all, it's all right there for me. These uh, CCK text fields, you can choose whether they are trimmed or not. And you can also, uh, I th I'm pretty sure plain text is just going to take out um, any, uh, it's, it, it'll just take all your markup and just force everything to be uh, thrown through the plain text input format so that it just shows you all the tags. I'm pretty sure there aren't any in there, but let's, hey, it's fun. Uh, once I save, I, I guess this is a setting that needs to be saved. 
This one is trimmed, so let's check out the settings here. You can set the trim length. I think this is new in Display Suite for Drupal 7 as well. So that's, that's exciting. I can change that. Um, so save this again. Close this out. And OK, so now I've got links. Silly labels are gone. Um, and again, I haven't had to do much. I'm going to visit this once again. Actually, let me let me check. I think each of these has comments. Yeah, OK. So we've got some comments here. I'm going to deal with that as well. So back to Display Suite. OK, so now I'm going to deal with the full node view. Um, we're going to give this um, Let's see. Yeah. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a yeah three columns stacked. Fun. Okay. Oh, and here's another thing. You can clone layouts. So if you have chosen a set of fields that you like and you want to ship it over to another content type that has similar fields or whatever, you can just say yeah, please do that for me, and it'll go great and just dump it over. Very so useful. Is that feature available in V6? Uh, that feature is available in Drupal 6, yes. And, and indeed, it, it's, it's cloned everything over here. So all the... Uh, oh, that's... Yeah, so it, it just it overrode the, uh, the layout that I chose. Yeah, that's fine. I'll just leave it. So uh, comments are in the footer here. That's good. But I actually need to take over the display of those comments. So I need to choose a layout, or, or I'm going to choose a layout for my comments. So um, the first thing just says, take all my comments, whatever they are, and just dump them in this region. Now within that region, I can hit Display Suite again. So I'm going to do that here. Just stick everything in two columns. OK. So now I have all the pieces of my comments. So take my title and my author and stick them over on the left side. The actual comment I will stick on the right. Uh, let's see. How about the post date? Left side, links, left side. Um, I suppose you probably want to know who posted it, maybe when, so let's put it all in there. Just leave this here and of course you can you know do nice reordering of everything, so just do this. Sure, great. I'm going to save it. And now I can close out all this stuff. OK, so we're looking at the teasers right now. It looks the same. We haven't made any changes here, but let's hit the full node. And now, of course, you know we're in the full node, so the theme is providing uh, the title here. So having the title here is a little bit redundant. We can get rid of that. But let's scroll down here a little bit, and here are the comments. So in the nodes footer region, we ha we're getting into Display Suite again and inserting a two-column layout just for the comments inside that footer region. And it's all, you know, it's all nice. Um, and it's all, uh, as you can see, the, uh, we're missing some styles on these tags, which, uh, you know, you can do, you can handle in your theme. But um, this is part of the deal about using Stark, I guess. But it has put everything in here, and everything has this, has this layout. And, of course, you got this guy down here. Um, which this is nested display suite. And it's exportable. And it's exportable. Yep. And if you order now, uh, <laughs> I'll throw in this free coffee module. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. I'm just a fan. I don't have any financial interest in this, guys. Okay. As long as we're clear. All right. <clears throat> so uh, let's take a look. Actually, what, I'm going to show you the same thing real quick in Drupal 6. Um, so let's go to the layout for my lots of fields. And uh, so you can see, I mean, it's, it's largely the same stuff, just changing these. Uh, oh, well, OK. So for, first off, in Drupal 6, Display Suite uh, layouts are not customizable. Um, this is just a, a design choice that the maintainer made. So you have you don't have to populate these regions with any stuff. So if you just use, say, 
the middle region, it'll just treat it like a one column layout. Um, if you just use you know, left and the middle, it'll collapse the right out for you, unless you tell it not to. Um, but, so like using left and middle be the same as using left and right? Yeah. Yep, should be. Um, I haven't looked at the CSS, but it, it should be. Yeah. Um, so in Drupal 6, if, you, if you, uh, you're constrained as far as what you can do with a layout, it's still, I mean, you know, with a, with a stacked three-column layout, you still have a lot, of, a lot of power. You can get a lot of mileage out of it, especially if you start to edit the CSS for it. Yeah, I mean, it, you just have to get a little gnarly with it. Yeah. Um, but in, in Drupal 7, there are very nice hooks for doing that, which I'll show you in a sec. So, um, <clears throat> a moment, please. Okay, so take all the same stuff here, and this is actually kind of nice, because this will make, with a three-column layout, it'll make a little more sense. One of the things that I like about um, setting up Display Suite this way is that it, I can also have fields for, like, depending on the client that you're working with, sometimes the idea of managing blocks separately from managing the, the other content on the page, the node, is that, that can be something that's confusing to people. So having, having a page content type with some fields that you can treat as sidebars is nice, and, and Display Suite, you know, nests very nicely in that, uh, in that kind of pattern. So let's stick all this stuff in... Highly useful places. I don't know if I have comments turned on for these guys. Okay, so I've done all that stuff. I'm not using overlays. My teasers are untouched, but here we go. Here's my, uh, here's my content. Um, <clears throat> to get to the comments stuff, in, everything is kind of broken up a little more in Drupal 6. Uh, I mean, the module still, you know, ties everything together for you reasonably nicely, but it, but it is different. So if I want to handle my display of comments, I have to go into this comment displays area. Oops, I don't want my, don't want my fields. Where are you? Layout. Comment. There we go. So, um, and I, I didn't check this, but I'm pretty sure the answer to this question is yes, that... Uh, you can, I think in Drupal 6, it, it, at least it's looking to me now, like every comment, no matter what content type it appears on, is going to share the same layout. In Drupal 7, I am pretty sure that is not the case. You can field your comments differently on different um, content types. Don't hold me to that, but I think it's true. So anyway, we'll just uh, run this out real quick. We're not going to reveal the email. Username, subject, oh yeah, definitely. Great. Back and hit this again. Yeah, okay, so here we go again. Comments all nice and laid out in a uh, sensible, float friendly way for you. So, that's uh, just as far as the, the first thing that will, I, I mean, especially for themers, I think this can be, like, you know, a very nice, uh, exciting win. But um, let's take a look at custom fields. So here in Drupal 7, um, in admin menu, it's, it's always labeled add a field, but here we can, we can take a look at the fields that are defined so far. Um, you have various types. A field, in if you've ever looked at Drupal, uh, the Drupal 6 version, uh, it's just called a field in Display Suite 7. In, it's called a code field in Display Suite 6. Um, a dynamic field is one that comes from C tools. A preprocess field, uh, Ashok, you might have to help me with this one, because I think it's, I'm, you would, would, you, would you like to? Uh, Let's go into it. You might as well take a look and see. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember myself, actually. Um, I'm pretty sure. I, so the, these different fields give you access to components at different stages of the build of a node. So I, I think that it's it just gives you access to whatever variables you've defined in a preprocess function. But I'm not totally sure because usually yes. I just use code fields. Yeah, you're right that's that. that's pretty yeah. much it. Yeah. So you can create your own preprocess. 
process variables we want in the order. In your team. In okay. Your okay. Template okay. Template so you can PHP. so you can do it. Okay. So I guess the win is that it lets you do that in your template.php file instead of writing a code field. I mean, it's pretty much yeah. the same idea, though, right? Great. Okay. Great. Uh, <laughs> that was sweet. <laughs> um, and then you also have block fields, which is kind of nifty. So that lets you, I mean, that basically that just gives you access to your blocks through Display Suite, and you can stick um, block content on any node you want. So anyway, I've defined a, a couple of these. Let's just take a little peek at this one. Um, so a nice thing about this is that you can, uh, there are two ways that you can define code fields. One, or, or I guess you can, you can mingle these, but um, you can use tokens, which are provided to you. In Drupal 7, token, uh, token module is built into core. In Drupal 6, you would need to install tokens separately. But it gives you a ton of uh, information about your node, your comment, you know, whatever. And it provides it to you in these nice, uh, just, you know, a tokenized string. So in this case, it saves me from having to write, you know, something like, you know, give me some PHP here, and it'd be like, in Drupal 7, be entity, you know, uh, author or whatever, you know. So for people who aren't developers for whom this might cause heart palpitations, um, having access to the set of tokens that Drupal 7 provides is great. And uh, not only that, you know, I can, I can say, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to, here's the spot that I want to put this now. Uh, where's that token? Oh, let's see. I want the current date and it, you can just click the token name and it inserts it for you. So it's very nice. Um, <clears throat> but this just gives you the opportunity that you can chain together a bunch of other stuff and just create a single field that you can drag around. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just, it's convenient if this is the kind of thing that you are looking for. Uh, so take a look at the block field here. Um, I've just defined from uh, uh, just a view of some upcoming events. So, oh, and, and so these entities tell you, uh, or tell Display Suite rather, which thing this, this is supposed to appear on. So if I'm, you know, I'm not gonna see this if I'm, if I'm working on comments right now, although you could. So you just choose your block from your enormous set of blocks and you can choose uh, one of these layouts for it. Great. And then when you go back to your layout, I can put this upcoming guy. I don't, I don't even know if this is going to show any content, but, you know, whatever. So here's my custom authoring field. I'm going to put that on the left side. So it appears first. Save this all out. And here we go. So here's my lovingly crafted by administrator. That's my custom field there. And I guess that upcoming block, that was a great choice because it has nothing in it. Well done. Um, <clears throat> but you get the idea. Let's see if... Oh, views. Yeah, let's not... Oh, and yeah, actually I'm, I'm going to take a look at doing the same thing for views. Uh, this is something I haven't, I haven't dealt with as much, but we're going to take a look at the display of views. All oh, right, yeah, so this, this homepage is a view of teasers, right? I'm not lying about that. It is true. So let's take a look at managing a view through Display Suite. So save that out, and now, this is interesting, now I, I can take all the components of a view and throw all those around. So we can get into some serious crazy nesting here. <clears throat> if I'm using a view for the whole page, and then inside that I have, a, say, a view of teasers, so I control the teasers with Display Suite, and maybe I'm gonna even show comments on my teasers or what have you, and so those are also controlled by Display Suite. So you have this just, you know, whoa, Pardon me, sir. Uh, you just you have this crazy nesting doll of uh, of all these things. So this is this is going to look great. I know it, but uh, this this view doesn't have a lot of stuff here, so it's not going to um, maybe be as as fun as it could be if I had a fully 
populated view with a bunch of, uh, you know, view stuff in it. Oh, right. Drag this there. Okay, so now we're really overdoing it here um, with, uh, with the titles, and then I told it to stick the view title over here on the left side, okay, and then all the view content is over here on the right. So we are getting seriously squished. You're gonna, you know, wanna use this judiciously, but the point is, you can. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that's views. Now we've looked, so we've looked at con the actual control of the displays. We've looked at some custom fields. Now let's take a look at the view modes. This is something that Steve is gonna get into uh, probably more, am I right? You haven't changed your mind? No. Okay. You can still change your mind. I reserve the right. Okay. All right. So, let's, uh, actually, where, where are those guys? View mode, yeah. There we go. View modes. Okay. So, I'm just going to add a view mode. I'm going to call it, you know, super view. Okay, so now what I've done is given myself another option for my layouts over here. Oops. Yeah, super view. So I have a custom, if I, if I don't turn this on, it's not one that's, you know, some of these other view modes, full content, teaser, RSS, search index, and search result, those are all core view modes. So I have to, you know, make sure to actually turn on the super view. Um, and now I've got it up here. Okay, so I'm going to choose the layout. Yeah, let's just clone it. That's fine. But I'm going to move things around a little bit here. So um, let's get rid of the title and put the body over here and ditch the crazy byline and just get rid of a bunch of stuff here. Just make it very clear that something different is going on. Save this. Okay, so with these different view modes, there's different ways that you can use them. You can, you can tell views module to use a different view mode, and so you, you just get access to more um, control over the display of stuff in your views. But uh, let's see if I can remember where the setting is here. Um, extra fields, yeah, here we go, okay. So if I turn on switch view mode, close this out, I'm going to edit this node. Yada, yada, all my fields, yeah, great. Okay, display, uh, display settings. So I can, right now this is just going to use whatever the default is, uh, depending on the situation. I can say, instead of using the default view mode, when I view this as a full node, I'm going to use super view. So now when I look at this, the fields are different. And this is the case only for this one node. If I look at this, it's different. So um, there are you know, you can let your imagination run wild with this, but it, it's, I mean, your the list of things that you cannot do with, uh, with your content display using Display Suite are vanishingly small um, as you start to leverage all this stuff. And there, I mean, there's a ton more settings in here, a bunch of stuff. Um, you, can, you can also control your, your search results. I mean, you know, I don't know. There's, there's not a lot you can't do um, here. But let's, uh, let's take a look at custom layouts. So this is a, first of all, here's the, the documentation for it. The documentation is very good. Um, I'm going to just give you a quick overview of it. Um, but that's, that's your node uh, to look at this stuff later. So in, uh, in Drupal 7, as you saw, there are 11 layouts provided only one in Drupal 6, so we love Drupal 7 Display Suite for this reason. But hey, maybe that's not enough. Uh, the, and there are you know, different use cases for that. So uh, 
say you wanted to use different markup for whatever reason. You want to use HTML5. Um, like if you want to use some HTML5 semantics on your, uh, on your display, there is one layout in, uh, in Display Suite 7, one of the default three column layouts does provide HTML5 semantics, but if you want to roll your own, this may be a use case for that. Or, you know, you're just a control freak. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, so you're talking about like section tags and actually the piece yep. of the HTML5? Sections, I mean, it basically like that the layout that, that it's provided uses asides for the sidebars, and uh, I think it's an article tag for the main content. Um, But it's only one. So if you if you wanted to you know beef up, uh, if you have some use case where you need to have beefier semantics, um, that's that's one really easy thing I could see you wanting to use this for. So what you do is in your theme you create a folder, and this is hard coded, a, a folder uh, called ds underscore layouts, and then inside that you're going to stick your custom layouts, which are a custom layout, all it is, there, there's an example one provided called example underscore layout um, that just comes with a distribution of display suite. But it, it's, at a minimum, it's just a, an ink, a dot ink file, which is just a little bit of PHP, maybe some CSS, that's optional. I think there's also an info file, but that's it. Um, one of the nifty things is that display suite 7 comes with a drush command as well. Um, anybody know what drush is? Raise your hands. Okay, good. A lot of people know what Drush is. For the few of you that don't, I'll just say it's it's a command line tool, uh, which hopefully is not too terrifying because it's really great. And it will let you do things like so you can just type out Drush DS hyphen build, and then you can give it the name of your layout as a, as a quoted string. You can tell it what you want your region names to be as a comma separated list. You can tell it if you want a CSS file or not. You hit the command, and it doesn't automatically, it, depending on where you run it, it's not necessarily going to find where it needs to be installed. But wherever you run it from, it will create the, uh, the file for you, named correctly, with all the function names in there, with all the region names set up. So really all you need to do is just stick it in there, and, and it will be available for you. It's pretty sweet. <clears throat> so uh, when I was messing around with this, I found a few things that you know, could be troublesome that I would like to point out to you. Uh, one is w when you're, actually, let, let, me, uh, let me go hit this. I'm going to show you. Okay, so I have my, my uh, sub-theme of Stark called Iron Man, and uh, here's my DS layouts folder, and I have bad layout. Um, and I, I, do I have, my, yeah, okay. So this is, this is what the file, uh, let's see, this is probably a little on the small side, is it not? Let's boost this up a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> so this, uh, uh, I, if you're not a developer, this may make you pass out, but don't worry. It's cool. What happens is you get these region names, which are converted into... Uh, PHP variables by display suite. So if you have one that's called content and just content, uh, your theme is not going to like you because Drupal has a built-in variable already called content and so you're going to get name collisions and it's not good. So when you're naming your regions, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure display suite build will take care of this for you, but just be careful about what you name things. If, if you find your theme freaking out after you've made a custom layout, check your variable names. Maybe, you know, you could prepend a you know, a na something on them like that, just to, and then reload it and just see how it goes. Um, <clears throat> so you want to watch out for that. Um, when you're creating, uh, you, may, you may have the temptation if you're trying to follow some nice naming conventions to name your layout something with DS at the beginning. It's fine, you can do that, but if you start editing the code manually, you might confuse yourself because, uh, let's look again at, uh, at this thing. So my layout here, the file is called bad underscore layout dot ink. This, in this case, it's actually fine. This is, a, this is a good thing. But it automatically sticks ds underscore in front of it. So if you have decided to name your layout, you know, ds whatever, you're going to end up with something like this. And then you're going to maybe think, oh, wait a minute. No, sorry, you've got to get rid of that or whatever. And it could, it could uh, just cause yourself a little bit of confusion later on. 
Um, <clears throat> so you don't have to do that. That's all I'm saying. And then the last thing, uh, just you know, more generally, be careful putting HTML IDs in your layout files. Uh, let's take a look. So we have the ink file, which just defines the uh, code for the actual layouts. But then this, okay, so yeah, this is where this is where you start to run into trouble. So here's here's my content uh, variable, and Drupal is you know going to have a confused notion of what that means. But anyway, uh, if you get tempted to put HTML IDs in your actual tags, uh, I'm going to tell you that you just want to be careful when you do that because these layouts are shared by, like every time Display Suite displays a node, for example, it's going to use this layout and it's not going to stick an automatically incremented ID or whatever in there. So you could end up with a bunch of things on your page with the same HTML ID, which is, you know, potentially going to cause unexpected results for CSS or, you know, JavaScript interactions, you know, that sort of thing. So just be careful. Watch your semantics and, and uh, probably just avoid IDs in your custom layout files. So this is something that uh, kind of, you know, gave me that, uh, I don't know, it, uh, it made my eyes go flutter in disbelief because uh, it was so, so nifty. Even with the power of custom layouts, it doesn't even stop there. Uh, so every um, the display suite also provides template hints. So here's my here's a, a sample HTML5 layout I created, right? And I have this TPL file. Display suite also lets you override that. So in my theme, I can have, and it, it tells you. Let's let's go back and look at the uh, at the hints here. So if I'm going to use this layout, okay, yeah, it, it gives you a description here. So I'll use my my sample layout, right? So when you change layouts in Display Suite, it's going to tell you, hey, you you just had a bunch of stuff laid out. Maybe you, you want to move that around. So I'm just going to do this real quick and uh, assign those two regions in my new layout. Save that. Oh, come on now. Oh, these are regions. Excuse me. This, I wonder if this is going to work. There, there might be a... I might have just... Hey, awesome. I just found a new gotcha. <laughs> um, well, anyway, I'm not going to show you that because I just borked my own demo. <laughs> Thumbs up, guys. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, it provides you with hints so I can say, all right, on nodes use this version of this of this custom layout or on you know comments use this version and and the secret is all in these uh, hyphen hyphen things that it shows you on that screen so I mean it's uh, it's a little bit insane the the amount of the the level of you know uh, inception recursion and depth you can get into here um, but that I think it's just about it. If you want to learn more about Display Suite, uh, obviously you can talk to me or Steve or Ashok. Um, there's the main documentation page, which is up there. You can get, I mean, it's easy to get to from the main Display Suite page, but I'm just, you know, I'm just giving it to you right there if you want it. Uh, the maintainer has his own uh, blog with a, a series of posts on the usage of Display Suite. You can go there and learn all kinds of stuff. Um, and, you know, there, there's a lot of people here who know it. I know Jeremy up here knows it. Uh, he, he made me drink the Kool-Aid, and I'm a happy customer now. Um, but that is it. So um, I'll, we have a few minutes for questions if anybody has one. Yes? Can a single node ID have multiple view, node, uh, view modes? I mean, yes, it can. You can't, depending on the way that the node is accessed, so, like, if you're accessing it through a view, that it might have... I'm not sure what happens if you... if Like, when I showed you that example uh, where you can choose the view mode on the node, um, if you're using a view that has the... where you're telling the node to use the, the default or the full content view mode, 
probably whatever you set on that node edit form would take precedence, but you, the same node, depending on its mode of access, can use different build modes. So if it's on a view, that, that node will, could be shown one way if you tell the view to use a different build mode. Yep. Uh huh. It, yeah, that's in Drupal 6. Uh, in, in Drupal 6, it's, uh, sorry? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, it's nd underscore switch underscore build mode or something like that in Drupal 6. Uh, but with, with Display Suite, it's all about the context. So, um, and incidentally, if uh, anybody who's using context module, you can also, another way that you can trigger, I mean, the, so I'll step back. You can trigger build modes based on simply just, you know, teaser and, and full. Those are the core ones. And then context can be set by things like, am I in a view? Or if you're using context module, what is my current context as defined by context module? It's all about those different triggers. And those will determine which view mode your node or whatever um, uses. Yeah, Steve, Steve's going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, I saw this hand first. Uh, I've come to think of themes as the, the, the selection uh, of layout style, where I go to find different flexible layouts and such. Mm -hmm. And yet this seems to take a, piece of, a chunk of that out of the theming layer and put it into the display so you, that you're using it here with Spark, which is pretty much layout free. Right. Is that the right way to think about it? Can you comment on, on how you think of themes versus display suite now? Display Suite is operating in the, I mean, it's, it's a module that operates in the theme layer. So it's, it's just, it, it's a way to take components that, that you might have to just write in code when you're developing a theme. And it just, I mean, you could think of it as giving you a user interface for functions that would normally require writing some code. But it's all in the theme still. I mean, it, it is theming. Like, this process is, is at the theme layer. Would you use Display Suite with Zen or Fusion? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, um, it's, but uh, but again, you know, you're you're thinking it, there's there's like boxes in w in that things operate in. So you have you know big the big box is Drupal, and then inside that you have the different subsystems of Drupal. The theming layer is one, so you choose a theme, right? And the theme gives you a bunch of things, but the display of an individual piece of content is controlled by the theme but you can control it by Display Suite. Now, if, if you start getting into things where, where you are editing your TPL files, you, depending on how you do that, you could negate your ability to use Display Suite. Um, so, you know, if you're, if you're more of like a template hacker, just, you'll, you'll just need to be cognizant of, of that issue and just, uh, yes. I'd just like to also point out that even though Display Suite gives you the ability to order your fields into different sections on the page, the, one of the biggest advantages that you can get from using it is simply the fact that it has build modes and the fact that it gives you template files that you can implement to override those uh, default settings that it would have. So you're still within the context of a node.tpl.php file, but now you're doing it for a specific build mode. So then if you're looking at it in a different view or if you're looking at it in a different kind of layout somewhere else in your site, you're using your tpl.php files. You're not using whatever ordering it has on the page, and you don't need to. But the fact that it gives you those build modes to be able to work with and to be able to utilize in different areas of the site while still keeping it within the context of a Drupal way is very powerful. Yep. Here we go. Uh, what type of performance hit are you taking if you have like a, a view mode for a home page and then you have a separate view mode for a blog and separate view mode for a portfolio type stuff? I know that's going to be <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. I mean, I so in Drupal 6, you will see some level of a performance hit, mainly because the way that views perf works in Drupal 6 is that when you have a particular view and you select the different fields, those fields will be part of the query, and that's what's going to get formatted at that point. In Drupal 7, it's a totally different scenario. It gets the results, and then it still does a node load on all of the different parts, and then it has to 
get all the fields, and then do all the pre-processing, all of that at that point anyways. So in Drupal 7, Display Suite doesn't really have much of a performance hit, if any. And from the testing that Christoph has done, he's actually found it faster to do it through Display Suite than through having it go through the, uh, through the build mode that comes stock with uh, views. And if you use something like Entity Cache, which, uh, which I've talked about in the past, it will, it'll cache your, it'll cache your entity so then the next time whenever any viewer whatever calls it, instead of doing all of the processing to get all of the different fields, all of that stuff, it'll just be really fast. It'll, it'll get stored into one row in one of the cache tables. Entity Cache is only Drupal 7 though, right? Yep. So yes. There, for Drupal 6, uh, on, on the maintainer's blog, he did, he did post some benchmarks, which, I mean, you know, obviously he's, he's going to, uh, you know, I suppose you might have to take it with a grain of salt because he's going to say my, my module has pretty decent performance. But there wasn't a huge difference of using Display Suite or not in the case he tested in Drupal 6. That said, there, the result, is it Object Cache? I think yes, it's Object Cache. Object Cache module. Yeah, for, for Drupal 6, um, which is recommended right on the Display Suite uh, module page as, as a good thing to keep around. Um, so, yeah. Anyone else? Yes. You had mentioned something about exportability. Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you the quick version, and Steve's going to give you the, the, the juicier version. So since uh, since my Drupal seven is a little hosed right now, or not, I mean Drupal seven isn't. It's fine. Uh, you know, user error. Um, <clears throat> But anyway, so here we go. Display Suite, here, it's under Tools, and you can export your settings. So I'm going to say, all right, I want to export my, you know, the, all the stuff I've done in Display Suite for my lots of hug and fields thing here. So I'm just going to call it test. It does not matter. And so after doing that, it gives you this code. And you can do with this whatever you want. I mean, it's, it's provided you this stuff on the assumption that you're going to create a module called test, but, you know, you can do whatever. And then it gives you... All of the uh, <clears throat> all of these settings of just you know where everything's placed and it's all right there in the code. So once you've done this, you can start managing Display Suite stuff in code. You can keep it versioned, and that's all you know. Really nice for really a site of any size. Yeah, I found it really useful. You know, panel is kind of overwhelming for the version of the audience, but Display Suite is a lot easier. build a lot of an app, but then they can modify it, or they can understand how it's being laid out, basically how the content is being presented to them, and then they can manipulate it through CSS. Right. So, yeah, it, it definitely, it's, it's a lot easier to understand um, than Panels is, because Panels has so much depth. Panels can do, except I think except for build modes, and a few, you know, little, little features, it can do pretty much every, uh, everything that Display Suite does. One thing I will say that I, I didn't mention earlier that you can, that Display Suite will not give you, uh, is the ability to control your forms. Uh, so, like, if you want to change your node edit form and stick, you know, parts of it over on the left or right, you cannot do that with Display Suite. It's, it's out of the scope of the module. It's not going to happen. For that, you would need to use panels. Um, and so, but if you're starting to go down that road, um, you, may, you may find panels more to your liking anyway, just as a general solution. But... Um, but yeah, did you have a other comment? Okay. Did you want to look at the views role plugin? Like yeah, that? sure. And we got. Let's see. What what time do we have? Ooh, okay. Or not? Yeah, we got eight minutes. So, oh yeah. I was just gonna make a comment then that since you, it's so easy to export on D6 and D7, yeah, you can actually take advantage of the fact that D7 has um, the simple test module included, which is actually called a testing module. So it's like you can build your tests, right? Yeah, so that I'm just gonna make sure that makes it into this guy. You can it, with simple test, you can uh, you can build that in too, all with exportables. Anyone else? Yeah. I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, I don't, maybe I missed it when you were exp uh, explaining that um, you know based on how the node is being accessed, you can adjust the layout. Obviously. Yep. Um, did you mention something about how the user role or user? Basically, a user role change that at all? Uh, I did not mention anything about that, and off the top of my head, I don't know. 
Uh, okay, it's not. No, you can. You can I th well, hook. yeah, I think we, you might be able to do something with context with that. Uh, so, so check out. I mean, there, there is. There's a DS. You use the role to, to grab the context and the context can yeah, you can, you can set a you can set a context with context module and then look for that context and switch your build mode. Okay. Yeah. Cool. You want to? What's that? You want to show the rose thing or? Oh, you can type through it. It's pretty uh, I, easy. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm happy to have you do it. Um, just one nifty thing that you can also do with any given view is that if... Which one's your home? Uh, that's, yeah. That Lots guy. of fields? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, one option is when you're looking at... Is it in fields that you're doing stuff? Or? Uh, I... I uh, you might need different... I haven't actually I haven't chosen the Rose plugin here, so it, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's using fields without fields. Okay. So if we decided to use Display Suite as a potential way to display the content for the site, you can actually have a default view mode that gets shown for any given content that you have. So you know, by default, we might want it to show teaser. But if we wanted to, we could have it so that the first item that shows up on your page is the full content view of your, of your stuff to try and feature it on your page. So let's say even if you had, you know, another build mode for this stuff, like, um, like we had made, like Superview had been made. So you could have Superview be the first thing that pops up on the page. So you can try and feature it in that particular style. Uh, this looks like me different. Yeah, it's I I uh, I haven't really done a lot of stuff with this view. I might I I may have totally messed up uh, my uh, my situation here with my bad layout. Okay. Stuff and everything. I mean, who knows? The the original but, plugin style of uh, views attachment also did the same thing, but this is basically to let display suites. Uh, override of that. So if anybody's ever seen the, the, the selectable options when you're doing an attachment that says to offset by, so your attachment can be the first row and you can offset would be your regular view of rows by one so that that first row is the full node render and the rest is teasers. The nice part is, is that with display suite, oh, even using views attachment, you can I'm select the, the node build me. mode as one of your display suite build disabled. modes. Same thing here gotcha. with the new D7 interface showing it directly <laughs> there as well. Uh, any more questions? How do you fix that? How do I fix what I did? Yeah, that's a that's a that is one hell of a question. Time machine. Yeah, time machine. Yes. Yep, yep, we're good. So uh, uh, thank you guys for listening, and Steve's going to get set up for the second half of this. Uh, thank you. For